to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Apologies. Again, I feel like I'm saying this all the time now, but it's great to have you guys back. If you are new to the channel, welcome for the first time. Uh, please feel free to like and subscribe this video if you are enjoying the content. If you haven't had a chance to look at any of my previous content, please do so. Uh, but I'm happy to have you guys here with me today. We are going to be talking about me taking my C4 Corvette, which is behind me, to the track. We went in the rain, and let's just say that it was uh, a little bit of a struggle. in the rain and with the Corvette Club that uh, that puts on the events, they put on these track events, rain or shine, which means if you are going and it happens to be raining, you are gonna learn car control. And boy, uh, did we learn some hard lessons on car control. Um, I think the biggest challenge for me was uh, the tires that I have on this car and they are street tires. Uh, they are the Nitto MT555 G2, which, they're one of the few tires on this car that, that actually fit in these sizes. Um, these wheels are the uh, Grand Sport replica wheels. And you can see they've got a built-in offset in the back. True Grand Sport wheels uh, don't have this deep lip on them, uh, but they do have that uh, five-point style. So I've got these replica wheels, which are pretty affordable actually. Uh, but to get a, a modern set of tires to fit these wheels, which are 315, uh, 35, 17, uh, there's only a few tire manufacturers that are making tires in that particular size for the rear. And then in the front, we've got 275s. Uh, these are 17 inch wheels, obviously. So um, the Nittos, especially when they're a newer tire, they do pretty well. As the tire starts to wear, which I've, I've I've beat up on these tires pretty well. They've got a 300, you know, they're like a 300 tread wear rating. So they are a solid street tire. Uh, when you want to start tracking on them as an entry level track tire, I do like them because you can drive to the track. You can beat up on them for a while. They're pretty predictable at the limit. Um, but in terms of outright grip, especially as uh, the tire starts to wear, you really start to notice that you're losing grip relatively quickly. Um, and on top of that, uh, especially in the rain, I really don't love these tires. If you were going to go to the track on a street tire and you are not running the 315, so just let me back up. This is a 1996 LT4, and the LT4 cars had 285s on the back. If you had a Grand Sport or a ZR1, which ZR1s were not made in 96, but if you did have a ZR1, you got the 315s uh, from the factory. Uh, but the LT4 cars, if you went to a 315 tire, then you would get uh, then you or you would get the 315 wheel, and then you would get a, a, the wider tire to go with it. Otherwise, from the factory, you would get the factory saw blades, which I do have, which have a 285 on the back. And the Continental Extreme Contact Sport is, I think, a much better tire for all weather conditions. If you have one of these C4s in the Continental. Extreme Contact Sport is being made for pretty much every version of Corvette, starting with the C4 all the way up into the C7. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly what they're doing with the C8 for, from a tire perspective, but I know that C4 through C7, you can get the Extreme Contact Sport, and there's a reason for that. Uh, they're just a solid all-around tire. They wear really well. Uh, they're better in the rain. Unfortunately, they don't make it in a 315. So that is the reason why I got the NT Triple Five G2. If you are going to the track and you still want a streetable tire, I would recommend going to the N 
the Nitto NT01, which is the tire that I'm going to replace these with. Um, much better tire that you do pay a penalty in tread wear, but you get a much grippier tire on track and you can go back and forth to the track uh, much more easily. If you can stomach it, if you can, uh, your budget allows, I would recommend that you run the Triple Five D2 if you've got a 315 on the back. You could run the Triple Five D2 or an equivalent tire of that size on the street and then go to an NT NT01 um, on the track and just basically change your tires in and out uh, on a complete set. So that's what I would recommend doing for those of you who are interested in tracking the car. Okay, we need to get to suspension setup. So I think it was last year or two years ago, I made a video that was talking about my C4 suspension setup. Now I'm a little bit of a purist, not super crazy, uh, but I try to I try to stay to kind of what the, the factory engineers had in mind. So for my suspension setup, I don't have any kind of crazy coilover setup or anything like this. Um, I am running the stock, well, let me rephrase that. I am running uh, leaf springs on the car still, but the rear spring has been upgraded to the Z51 leaf spring. The shocks have been upgraded to the Z51 all around. The 1996 Corvette actually came with the softest suspension from the factory, uh, the FB1 suspension, unless you ordered the Z51 option or the like. So uh, I went to the Z51 Bilstein's, I went to uh, the Z51 rear spring. If you look underneath my car, I don't know how well you can see, but I do have the vet to vet no flex kit. So guys, if you can see right here, and you can see there's, it runs right here underneath the car, this black bar here runs right across. People have asked me about that as well. I don't consider that by itself a performance upgrade. I would suggest that you start with the Z51 shocks and the Z51 rear spring before you go to the no flex kit. The no flex kit does help you and for those of who are not familiar with the NoFlex kit or what its purpose is, underneath the, um, the Corvette convertibles, the C4 convertibles, they've got basically an X brace to help stiffen the chassis to keep it from flexing uh, and hard cornering uh, and make the car not feel like it's kind of a flexible flyer. So, uh, the, and some guys, what they do is they will actually take the X brace or find an x brace from a convertible and put it underneath the coupe because the mounting points are actually the same and, and, and should be underneath your car if you were to jack it up you would see where those mounting points would be. Well the no flex kit basically does the exact same thing. The difference is that you have bars that run parallel along the, um, the frame rails rather than uh, crossing over underneath the car. So it makes it easier for you to work on the exhaust, change the oil, etc, etc. So, by itself, I would not consider that a performance upgrade. However, if you are doing suspension things with either more spirited driving or track, entry level track stuff in mind, then I would recommend that you go to the NoFlex kit, but not do it as your first uh, performance upgrade. So um, just wanted to give some updates on that. The car corners really, really, really well in this setup. I actually have a C6 Z06, which I will show you guys later for those of you guys who don't know. Um, and there are certain corners uh, when I'm running out in the countryside that I can take pretty much at the exact same speed in my C4 as my C6 Z06, partially because the Z06 happens to be pretty much stock from a suspension perspective, except for the shocks. Um, but on the C4, just with the upgrades I've done, the car just feels much more uh, short-footed at the limit. So I'm able to kind of push it a little bit harder and not feel like it's gonna break away from me. Uh, the next thing I plan on doing with this car in, in, in regards to suspension uh, is going to a thicker front sway bar. The car does understeer a little bit more than I would like. Uh, so to give it a little bit more quicker turn in, I would like to upgrade the front sway bars to the Z51 sway bar. So outside of that, I think I'll drive the car like that a little bit, get some better tires on it. And I think that'll probably be 
assuming that I'm, I'm fine with how it handles after that, uh, I think I'm probably going to be fine with that suspension setup. I'm, I thought about going to the Z51 front spring at the time that I went to get the rear spring. The front spring was unavailable. No one was making it. Looks like Van Steel is making it again. Uh, and they're all fiberglass now, so it's, 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 it's a little lighter than the factory. Uh, but that being said, I really like how the car handles right now. Like I said, the only thing I would do is upgrade the, the front sway bar. So I'm actually pretty happy with how this car is performing as it sits. I'm just really disappointed because when I went to the track and uh, it was raining, I really didn't get to see how this car would really, really do. Oh, also I have the brake bias spring, which is very difficult to put in. I actually did not put it in, I had my local shop put it in. But it pushes more of the braking to the back. So the car still brakes primarily with the front brakes, but you get a little bit more rear brake in there. And what that does is it helps the car on hard braking. The car doesn't nosedive nearly as much. And so therefore you're able to get on throttle a little bit quicker. The car is a little bit more upright in the corners. Um, so you're able to kind of steer your way through some stuff at a little higher speed and not feel like the car and all the weight is on the front tires and now you're getting a little light in the rear end. So really, really nice upgrade. Um, the bias spring I got from Doug Griffey Motorsports, which happens to be um, in Minnesota, which is where I live. So uh, really, really nice upgrade. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. Um, one thing I also want to mention, big shout out to my Corvette Life because this car actually has the DeWitt dual row radiator and on top of it having the radiator, it also has the upgraded fans. I had the radiator put in a few years ago. That's actually a video that I did. Um, and the car was still running hot and it was because of a malfunction with the low speed fan. Uh, it was not coming on when it should and, and then the high speed fan had to work that much harder. So now that's been corrected and the car runs much, much, much cooler. Also, I found out at that same time that my water pump was starting to fail. Uh, so we replaced the water pump as well. So this car is running pretty well. Um, it's, it's, it has kind of gotten a shake a little bit in the rear end, but that, and, as, and if you follow my videos from the past, you know that partially because this car is not a clean type of car. It was a salvage type of car from, uh, basically from conception because the owner of this car, this was a one owner car. I got it with 48,000 miles on it. It now has about 72,000 miles on it. Uh, that owner bought it in May of April of 96, rolled it in May of 96. So this car has literally been salvaged for its whole life. Uh, and it drives excellently when you consider that fact. However, uh, it does have a little bit of play in the rear end and that's mainly due to what we found out um, are the bushings, the differential carrier bushings, or what we call the bat wing bushings, which hold the differential uh, to the chassis. So um, this car really benefits from bushings. I would recommend that if you're going to get bushings, which this car will get, that you go with the Super Pro bushings. Uh, I think they're like $350, they're like a purple color. Those are uh, widely considered top of the line bushings for this car. So highly recommend that. That is really kind of the breakdown of what this car, where this car sits right now in terms of modifications. There are no engine mods in this car. Uh, it does have a muffler delete, which watch that video. That actually happens to be one of my more popular videos. Um, there's been a lot of, <laughs> it's kind of funny because in the Corvette community and in the car community in general, obviously everyone has an opinion. Uh, let me just say that the muffler delete is not a, a performance enhancement in the sense that it's gonna give you more power. Um, so let me just get that out of the way. What it does do is provide the car with a lot more sound at pretty much every volume. It does give you a little bit of drone, even if you use a traditional uh, muffler delete kit and they sell, do sell those, they're usually about 100 to $200. And it's just some pipes that, got some, that have some uh, baffles in them effect effectively so that the car doesn't drone as much. Uh, what I did is I just did a just a straight up straight straight pipe, two and a half inch pipe all the way back out, uh, and removed the mufflers and then welded on new tips. Um, but the car sounds really really good on track, and you can go watch that video or you can listen to this sound clip here.
guys is uh, long term, yes, we will make some engine modifications just because when you get on track, you really realize that this car probably could use a little bit more torque. Um, I am spoiled again by the fact that I have a C6Z and that car is putting down um, well over 600 horsepower to the tire. Hey guys, we're not gonna make too many friends today, but we're gonna do it anyway. Looking at things like headers, maybe a mild cam, things like that are in the future for this car. But that is pretty much the update. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I appreciate you guys. Um, it's been a crazy summer for many reasons, um, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me. And again, for those who are new to the channel, if you like what you saw, please comment, please like, please subscribe, please ask any questions that you have. And I will definitely go into more detail and answer uh, any more questions if you guys uh, have them. Also, I do have a website, thefamilycarguy.com. I actually have an article which talks about um, the modifications that I recommend and kind of your, your first foray into tracking with a C4 Corvette, um, thefamilycarguy.com. And, and I believe, I actually will link that below in this video, in the description and it will go into more detail on what my recommendations and thoughts are if you are a newbie and it relates to tracking a car, specifically the C4 Corvette. Uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Be blessed. Peace out.